bit deeper, and I'm Joe. I'm joined with by Tammy DeLau. Glad to be here. And David Baxley. <laughs> and Too good. this Sunday is going to be the 28th of March, 2021, and we are diving into a completely new series yes. mm-hmm. uh, called Living Free. And this is part one, Living Free. Yeah, and this is a series to give a little... Um, it, there's an encouragement, encouraging history for me in the series mm-hmm. that comes all the way back when, back in August, we had um, a preaching team retreat. It was the first mm-hmm. retreat we've had as a preaching team, and our desire was to go and uh, really see God, what's the direction he would like us to go as we look into the next six, eight months. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of the, actually every place we've come out and we've been in scripture in, our, in different series over the last uh, several, several many months came from that retreat and Daniel and um, Colossians and, and ones before that too. And, and, but one that came out that was really special was the desire to, as we come around Easter, to really look at... Um, we have different, uh, some different wording we use, but as we've kind of fleshed it out, really look at what does it mean to really live in the freedom the resurrection brings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it was mm-hmm. something we wanted to time with Easter because it is a, it's a moment when we look and see that there was a victory. There was something that occurred that it wasn't just his death. It was his death and his resurrection Mm -hmm. where he defeated death. There was a victory that occurred Mm -hmm. that is now available to us through Jesus Christ and what he has experienced. And and not just a victory over death. We often just think, okay, now I get to live forever. I can go to heaven. But a victory over sin that is meant to not just affect our ability to... uh, to, to be saved or to live with God in eternity, but to give us a victory in our lives as we live for God, as children of God, follow Christ mm-hmm. here on earth. But mm-hmm. that's, even as I say it, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm even saying what makes this series so hard because as we look in the message this week, we realize this great tension that although we know we're, we're free, mm-hmm. often in our Christian life, it just doesn't feel like we're free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was one of the things that really is, is at the heart of this first week as we're going to the series. This series will take us uh, through the month of April. And, uh, and this week was supposed to be more of a setting the table, maybe even more focus on getting real about the problem mm-hmm. before we start to really begin to talk about uh, the depth that Scripture has for helping us begin to, to live free. What does it really mean to mm-hmm. walk in those things? Mm-hmm. I've been a Christian... Um, Okay, I'm just doing math in my head. So uh, since I was, uh, you know, 13, 14 years old. So how long does anybody do quick math? It's like, what, 25-ish years? Know, sure. And uh, <laughs> and throughout my life, I've had so many times in my life where I'm like, is it, it feels like it's not supposed to be this way. Mm-hmm. I, I, why am I struggling with sin mm-hmm. the way I am? Why don't I feel like I have the victory? Yeah. And And even worse than that, I find myself looking at others and looking at their lives and they seem to have it together. Um, why, why don't I seem to have that same freedom? And then, then there's different ways we feel, but like there's guilt and shame that comes with that. But we recognize as we were looking as a, as a preaching team, just really felt like I was like, it's time to have those real conversations mm-hmm. about sin. And, and we, we talk about sin in this big kind of generic sense, like, yeah, we all sin. Okay, fall sin, fall short of the glory of God. We need Jesus. He died for our sins. And, and sometimes that's as far as we go to it because mm. to go deeper it gets messier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think of the scripture, like, confess your sins to one another. Mm-hmm. Like, that is pretty specific. Mm-hmm. That's not like just being like, here's, uh, oh, yeah, I did this. And it's like a specific thing mm-hmm. that you confess to other people. Mm-hmm. And that takes... Oof, humility and uh, knowing someone mm-hmm. very well that they're not going to judge you or, <laughs> you know. I mean, as we're, as we're doing Recovering Redemption as women, Matt Chandler will often say that if you are 99% known, you're still unknown, and the evil one uses mm-hmm. that. And so that's really been a tension that we've wrestled. There have been some of my sweet ladies that they've been burned by people when they've been honest. And so sharing yeah. and, and being real is scary to them. And so it's kind of like, mm, it's between God and I. We're talking about my sin. That's all I need to talk to. So it's been really fun to see eyes be open and women be excited. And 
I wish I could think of the verse, David. You shared it with me because I really felt like it opened the door for women to see. It was James see. 5. It was Joe, James which, 5. Just so yeah. not just confessing our sins, but be healed. And they are yeah. starting to experience that as they're being real about yeah. what they struggle with and realizing they're not alone. I think the lie is... I'm the only one who struggles with this. So there's there's freedom mm. in sharing. There's healing in sharing. Well, and I think you're hitting it because yeah. as we looked at what is, a lot of the message wasn't a lot of takeaways in the sense of what do we do now because of it. It was more, what do we realize now? Right. Uh, a, like kind of a reality check, you mm -hmm. might say. Um, yeah, this what, first one really is a reality orientation. Yes, it really yeah. is. And, and each of the little mm -hmm. bits of reality we talked about, our desires to go through the series and, be, and begin to really unpack those more and begin mm -hmm. to walk. So how do we walk in freedom in light of those, mm -hmm. those realities? But I think we have to get real enough with our brokenness. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've seen coming out of this message was for this week was that none of us are as free as we may want to think we are. Right. Yep. But at the same time, I want to go the other direction too, we're not as captive mm -hmm. as we think we are. I talked about there's, there's, two, a good there's two ways we end up responding to sin. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mm -hmm. had permission, and I, I'm sharing my, my, my uh, example, my mm -hmm. life and my wife's. And mine tends to be more the denial or more the I'm... I'm free. I'm free. I'm good. Like, yeah, you know, I sin sometimes. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, or, or we use the Christian code word, I struggle, mm -hmm. which, <laughs> which is our great way yeah. of saying I want to minimize sin so I don't have to deal with mm -hmm. the, necessarily the reality of what that is in my life and what that means. Mm -hmm. I'm t completely guilty of that. It's a, it's a protective Or even me. the word wrestle, because at some point it sounds like mm. you're, you know, That's good point. sporty. You're doing it right. You're wrestling. <laughs> I'm wrestling. <laughs> so, I'm fighting my sin. Yeah, I'm wrestling. Um, and, yeah, that, uh, and that's true, too. And mm -hmm. And in my own life, I think what I, what I do with that is I tend to live in a little bit of denial mm -hmm. of the place sin or certain sins might have in my life at different seasons. And in that, I find more comfort in remembering my righteousness and ignoring my sin. Mm -hmm. And so I, where I would put my, um, my struggle is self-righteousness in that sense. And as my wife and I were talking, she's, that's not her at all. Uh, where she goes is often the opposite which place, which can be just as destructive. Mm -hmm. um, mine gets to be more, we don't talk about mine as much because it looks good. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to talk about my destructive one, but mine is, is I think, very destructive uh, for us in the church and the faith. The other one, Amy uh, would probably say is more her, is the opposite of that, which is so guilty, mm -hmm. so much shame. Look at how mm -hmm. unworthy I am. Mm -hmm. Look at how how. I'm not good enough. So, but everyone else is better than me. And instead of, and it, where I deny the reality of my sin, she might struggle more with um, forgetting the grace that God has for her in her sin. Mm -hmm. But both those things hold us captive. That's the, we hold the series living free because both those approaches at deny my sin, I'm living in it and mm -hmm. it's got me. And, and, but I don't, I'm not willing to admit it's got me. The other one is Wallowing it's got it. me and I'm un, and I don't know how to, talk about it. I don't know how to, I, I'm, I don't want to share it. I don't want to tell people. And I'm just yeah. over here in the corner going, I'm not good enough. I can't serve in the church. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Or mm -hmm. I just need to get in, get in my oh, hide and just hopefully God will start liking me again one day. And, and we go with these two extremes. Mm -hmm. They hold us captive to sin. And neither of those get us to a place of what you said from James 5, Joe, which mm -hmm. is this beautiful command, confess your sins one to another. And that's not. That's the first one. Second part is mm -hmm. pray for one another, that's yeah. right. so right. that you might be healed. healed. It's not confess mm -hmm. that you have sin. That's what we like to do. Mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. Will you pray for me? Mm -hmm. It's confess your sins. Mm -hmm. It's it's that next level. Mm -hmm. And so as we talk about one of the mm -hmm. big problems is first, it's just we got to be okay talking about our sin. Mm -hmm. Yep. It really is the first step. And if I'm <clears> honest, <throat> I probably tend to be more. Um, go down the path that Amy goes down and just and can't believe I did that again or seriously what am I going to learn kind of thing mm -hmm. but at the end of the day when you look at both of those both are filled with self and filled with pride we're yeah, thinking that's, too that's much true. about ourselves that's true mm -hmm. yeah and I was I, I, we were chatting me and my wife were chatting with a couple like this past week and um, we were talking about like the struggle with sin and um, <clears throat> and, and, and whatnot but she she made a comment that was really good and i'm trying to remember it exactly but it was like 
she, she's been on the other side of freedom, struggling with sin and then confessing it and praying for each other so that you may be healed. She's mm. been on the other side of that. And so she sees people struggling with sin and wrestling with sin mm. or in sin completely consumed by it. It just has it. a hold on them one yeah. way or the other. It just mm. seems to have a hold. Still. Yeah. But she's like, why wouldn't you confess that? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you confess that? And then we can pray for you. And like, what is the, like, there's a block there because she's experienced so much freedom in confessing sin and the healing that can take place. She's like, why wouldn't you want to be healed? Why wouldn't you mm -hmm. want the freedom that comes from confessing your sins? Mm -hmm. And I think it's when you're on one side of the spectrum and you're 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 consumed with sin or whatever or you're or you consumed know, with guilt consumed with guilt or, or denial or denial <laughs> you're on that side and you go ah this this is this is better than you don't cuz once you experience that freedom there's no way you're going to be like i liked it back there That's i want to go uh, back there because once you experience that freedom you'll never go back well i i think you're describing it's safer where we've already known. Yeah. Because at it's least... It's Egypt. At, at least over here... Yeah, that's a good picture. That's a good mm -hmm. word picture right there. At least over here in my sin, either one of the examples, my example, Amy's example, uh, Tammy, your example, that mm -hmm. it's just us. Mm -hmm. There's a safety in hiding. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a safety in denial. And Joe, you know, you say, well, you know, why haven't people... You know, if only you knew. Well, I think the reality is we don't know. We don't talk about this like this often in our in our own Christian communities. Mm -hmm. We um, we kind of go to extremes where we kind of just be like, we feel like there's almost this condemning, like, what is wrong with you? Why aren't you righteous enough? Why aren't you holy enough? Oh, there's something wrong with you if that's still where you're at. Don't you know Jesus set you free if you just choose to walk in your freedom <laughs> and whatever I mean? But on the other side, almost an abuse of God's grace. Mm -hmm where we come over here and we're like, but God's grace is there. Mm -hmm. So you know what? You shouldn't sin, but if you do sin, don't worry about it. God's mm -hmm. grace is there. Mm -hmm. Both are, are, are false gospels in a sense mm -hmm. because the first one denies the grace of God in our lives. It denies that he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And the you. second one my is strength. a mockery of it. Yes, it's a mockery of God's grace. Mm -hmm. It's a mockery of the cross. Mm -hmm. Both are false gospels. That's the best way I, I know, I know mm -hmm. to say that because they deny they either they deny God's grace or they deny sin to its fullest extent. And Joe, I totally hear what you're saying. If you've been on the other side, why would you come back? I think you even said you wouldn't. I wish that was the case because I think yeah. we do experience freedom and then yeah. we hear the lies of the evil one. We mm -hmm. Egypt does, look, we, we go back to those old patterns. And yeah. so um, hopefully we're seeing less and less of that as we are yeah. being in the process of being sanctified. But yeah, you know, no, I just... that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the great reality checks is Romans 7. Um, and and Paul, he's in the middle of talking about grace. He's in the middle of talking about sin, freedom, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, as we're going through these. And, and in the middle of this, he says, I, I do not understand my own actions. Mm -hmm. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Mm -hmm. And as he describes a yeah. battle, uh, uh, he's describing all of our battles with right. sin. He's describing our battle with, with seeing that the law does and tells us mm -hmm. we shouldn't do things, and yet I still do those things. Why mm -hmm. am I doing these things? It's this big battle yeah. that I have with my own sinful nature. Mm -hmm. And we get saved. We're like, we struggle with, mm -hmm. why am I still in this battle? Right. And, and there's, a, there's a phrase we use where we're free but not fully free yet. Mm -hmm. We are been set free from sin. So now I have, by the power of the Spirit, the ability to walk in freedom but I'm not set fully free from the reality of sin as my sinful nature is still at war within me. Have you heard the phrase, we are living in the already, but the not yet? Is I, that Yeah, kind I think of the that's same? the okay. same idea. Okay. Yeah, absolutely the same. Do you want to unpack that a little bit more? Well, you know, we, yeah, I, I think you did. So I'm trying, okay. to see if I can, <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can do it better. But um, just that we, we, our sins are forgiven. We are forgiven, but because we're still battling the flesh, we don't have that complete freedom. So we're living in the already. We're already free. We're already saved. But in the not yet, it's not complete yet, you know, like mm -hmm. until Christ returns and we're no longer battling our flesh the way we do. 
and there's still an enemy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an there's an enemy that wants to keep us from being re- redeemed. There's mm-hmm. an enemy that wants to keep us restored in relationship with God. Mm-hmm. But once we are restored, the enemy still wants to completely rob us of the life that we're meant to live mm-hmm. in Christ. Mm-hmm. He wants to keep us from Christ. That's his that's his number yeah. one goal. He does not want us to experience the 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 birth of new life in Christ. So he the verse that says that he came to give us life and life abundantly. John 10, 10, yeah. So mm-hmm. is, does that fit with that? Like, and, and I'll use mm-hmm. old words, like many have their fire insurance, but they're not experiencing the abundance that they could have here yeah, well, freedom. on earth. Well, the it's full verse freedom. says the mm-hmm. thief comes to, to kill, steal, steal, kill, mm-hmm. and, destroy. and destroy. But Jesus says, I, I have come. come that you may have a life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and have it to the fullest, or have it the most abundant that mm-hmm. you could have, over abounding. Yeah, abounding. <laughs> yeah, and and, and see so that. So even there, that verse you brought up, there's that contrast mm-hmm. of we have an enemy that and I, that we are meant to fight against. We mm-hmm. we've talked about spiritual warfare. We're going to address that later on in the series because we have to understand that this enemy is part of what we're contending with. I'm not just contending with my sinful nature. No, I right. am contending with my sinful nature. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we can get so much where like, like uh, the, the, the phrase, there's a demon around every corner, but I never realized the demons within my own mm-hmm. sinful nature, my own desires, mm-hmm. you know, my own personal demons. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that does exist, but yet we have an enemy that is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. That as Peter says, he is, he is prowling like a lion that is, desperately hungry just mm-hmm. seeking whoever he can devour mm-hmm. to rob them of life to, lo- to rob us mm-hmm. he wants to rob every single person in this world it's, uh, even i think even more that are followers of christ of the life abundantly that we're meant to have mm-hmm. and so we it's not just an element of just oh, how do i create s- disciplines mm-hmm. to somehow not sin more there is a war that's taking place yeah. spiritual for our minds I mean, I think you touch that mm-hmm. a lot. That, are you going to touch it a lot? I know. I, that, yeah, I mean, just as you were starting mm-hmm. to go there, I'm like, I'm thinking the same thing. Second mm-hmm. Corinthians ten three, mm-hmm. although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. So he's contrasting this right here. I didn't, I didn't get the. I'm not going to get to unpack this the way I really would have wanted to. So I'm going to kind of do, do this here. here. Do it here now. Is so we 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 live in the flesh, meaning we still have our bodies. We're still having this battle with our flesh, our sin. Mm-hmm. We can't fight through our flesh, through our own earthly yeah. powers, our own, our own abilities by ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we since the weapons spinach. of our warfare, it, it says, are not of the flesh. The weapons that we have to fight the battle of sin, once we are followers of Christ, cannot be of ourselves, cannot be of our own logic, cannot be of our own uh, self-creation mm-hmm. of what we think we can accomplish. But he says, but are powerful through God, and there's other scriptures that give us more clarity of what those weapons are, but powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. Mm-hmm. The enemy is desiring to build areas in our life that have a stronghold around mm-hmm. sin. I mean, the sin has a hold. Mm-hmm. Now, although I am free in Christ Jesus, the sin creeps in, or I give ground to the sin, mm-hmm. and in this war of ground taking, although I am a follower of Christ, I'm a warrior of Christ, I will never lose my citizenship in heaven. Mm-hmm. I'm at war where ground is, in my own life, ground is being taken mm-hmm. for how this life will be lived abundantly on earth still in relationship with God, the way it's meant for me. And so he says, it, it, we're coming to demolish those strongholds. So he's admitting we're going to have them. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. going to battle with sin. And he says, we demolish arguments. And, I'll co- and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, you mentioned pride earlier, mm-hmm. and we take every thought captive, arguments, knowledge, and thoughts. Mm-hmm. All that begins, like you said, in our mind. Mm-hmm. It all begins in what's happening inside of us. The weapons of God are not um, are not birthed out of just behavior fixing; they're they're, they're heart and mind fixing. Mm-hmm. Romans tells us twelve to be transformed by the renewing of our mind to know and discern mm-hmm. the pleasing, perfect will of God for our lives. How to how to begin to walk in that good, pleasing, and perfect will? It doesn't say be transformed in your behavior. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say just start looking like a good Christian should look. And it says, be transformed in your mind, renewing of your mind by the power of God is what Paul's getting to here. Mm-hmm. So that you are able to, in your mind, fight and challenge the lies of, of Satan, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. It's really what he does. He starts with lies. His attack to us is lies. Mm -hmm. He's going to get in our mind. Mm -hmm. His attack is, is not just to, to throw situations in front of us, though he can do that. But really where it is is in our minds. Even a situation that comes in front of us, even he had nothing to do with it. Boom, he's going to come into our mind. He wants to fill us with lies that are contrary to the knowledge of God, who God really is. Mm -hmm what he says about us, who he says we are, how he says we are, we can walk in freedom. I think one of the big revelations at different points I've had in my life is just, I'm free. Like, I'm, I'm living like a captive right now, mm -hmm. but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm, I have a stronghold, mm -hmm. but I'm not captive. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not unfree, <laughs> but I, I'm allowing myself to, to live in that way. And that really has been mine. It's believing that I can't find freedom. It's believing that's always maybe going to exist in my life. It's believing um, differently about who God is, who he says I am, what he says he can do. And so our, our battle against him with the weapons of God, which really starts with God's word, mm -hmm. uh, but it also starts with what we say to each other and how we begin to fast and pray for each other. But we we, we bring up the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive to what we know about mm -hmm. God to war in our minds where the battleground of sin really is. Yeah. It's so interesting because we would never send one soldier in and think that he was going to win a war, but we live our lives like we're the lone soldier. Oh my we don't goodness, have that a is commander. so good. We don't have a commander in chief. We're not so listening good. to anyone. So uh, it's kind of ludicrous that we, that we do that. And then I do think as we have friends that are coming alongside, I have sisters that can hear the tone in my voice. They can see the bitterness creep up and, and they say, Okay, Tam, what idol is vying for your heart? What are you, you know, what mm. lie are you believing? Um, and I do agree with you, Joe. Once we taste that freedom, I never want to go back there. And so I'm, mm. you start to feel the unrest. You start to feel the disconnect. And, and hopefully we run back to truth and not yeah. keep going south, you know? Yeah. So. And the, the verse that keeps coming to my mind as you were talking about strongholds, David, is don't let the sun go down on your anger and give mm. the devil a foothold. I think it's Ephesians something, but yeah. yep. um, it's just so interesting how we can, strongholds don't happen in a night. Yeah. You know, it, oh, it, it really starts job. with a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, oh, he's got his foot in the door yeah. and now he's got his hand. Now he's opening the door. Now you let him in and now you entertain those things, mm -hmm. those, that bitterness, that anger, and it just creeps in. And then all of a sudden, five years later, you're going, why do I hate this person so much? Mm -hmm. Why every time I walk in the room with them, I'm so angry at them. And it's because you allowed the devil in at one point. And that's why this verse is so important. Take every thought captive and, and mm -hmm. pretend like, man, I am in a war constantly and I need to be on guard, guarding my heart, mm -hmm. guarding my thoughts um, and, and, and focusing on Jesus. We even come more to what Tammy said. And I know, th I know you believe what I'm about to say, but I think we sometimes say what you just said in our minds and we stop there. I need to be, I need to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. Instead, I think we need to start like, shifting our language. We need to be, we need, we to, be. need to be. Like I need Joe Roth in my life. Mm -hmm. yep. Joe has been my brother for, and we talk about this, 20 years. He's been a friend. You guys are he has been old? someone I <laughs> He has been someone I confess into mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that has prayed for me, and we have prayed together that we would experience healing in our lives spiritually mm -hmm. um, and physically in other ways that we prayed together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the number one lie. If Satan can just say, because you said it so beautifully, we would never send the soldier yeah. into war alone. That's if Satan point. can just convince us we're alone, mm -hmm. and we never believed any other lies and we just tried to battle in our flesh even even without him coming at us right. that one lie <laughs> would be enough to hold us captive mm -hmm. because we were never meant to be able to fight it alone mm -hmm. but not just with each other christ right I mean, we forget right. about jesus right. even in our own battles <laughs> i mean it, yeah, it has to start with the power yeah. of the holy spirit but then our brothers and sisters so it there's a definitely a vertical and a horizontal relationship going on mm -hmm. and a vertical and horizontal mm -hmm. confessing joe started mm -hmm. us out with that today yeah if there was one takeaway from the message, one takeaway that comes from Groger's, one takeaway that comes uh, from this podcast, it's, 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 Lord, open our eyes to see where we are in this, the, mm -hmm. see where we're not as free as we think we are, mm -hmm. uh, or see where our lies of guilt and shame still hold us captive mm -hmm. and help us to, to begin to confess that to somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, man, I mean, I remember when I first started confessing sin to people, it took me a long time. Cause I was in bondage. I was, I was afraid of what people would think. Mm. And then 
one day I heard a sermon and it was like, confess your sins to God. Confess your specific sins to God. Because yeah, he already knows them. He's not going to yeah. judge you. Mm-hmm. He good. already knows you. So confess them to God. And then when you do that, now you can start confessing specific sins to a human being. So I think it starts vertically, yep. gets our heart right, gets our mm-hmm. humility right, gets the language right maybe even. And then you can go to somebody. And, but you can't you have trust. just one of those. No. We don't fall to lie, Tammy. You alluded it earlier mm-hmm. that, well, if I'm going to have just one, I should be God. It should be God. I'll yeah. just leave it. No, no, it literally is a both and. Yes. You need both and. Well, and let's face it. When we sin, there usually is some collateral damage. So there's someone we need to talk to anyway. I mean, hmm. not just... There might be, con- it Good might point. be confessing to Carrie that I was unkind to Andy, but Andy needs to hear that I was unkind to him mm. too, you know? That's a, that's a really. Yeah, man, there's a, the spousal relationship mm-hmm. is so important. When you <laughs> start <laughs> to confess your sins to your spouse, mm. that opens up a whole nother level it, of it, relationship. It, it does actually, it opens up. Excuse me, because what confessing does, it builds intimacy because mm-hmm. it builds trust. Mm-hmm. Now, it can also break mm-hmm. trust. Right. I, want, let's, I, I think it's important that we acknowledge those that have tried to walk this and have been burned, as you right. alluded to early, earlier. And, and for those that are there, like if you're listening or watching, I, I want to really speak to that and say that has happened. That is painful. That is destructive. Absolutely. That is deadly poison to our soul. Uh, and that is in a way the enemy prowls like a lion mm-hmm. seeking to devour. And I want you to know, I have been there. I've had that trust broken. Mm-hmm. I've confessed and someone used it against me. Someone tried to hurt me with it, uh, attack my character with it. Um, mm-hmm. Even as a pastor has tried to do that with me. And and I want to encourage you, and, and I've had to do this too, please don't let the enemy's attack or even victory in that moment maintain you captive mm-hmm. Uh, to that lie that we that I That's just can't right. trust somebody, mm-hmm. and I know that is so much easier said than done. And I know, it, it, depending on how bad that's been, your heart might be racing. And even I could never do that. I could never mm-hmm. do that. Um, the the truth is, is that I, I I mean I've been friends with Joe a long time. I trust Joe, but at the end of the day, I have no clue what Joe's going to do. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, Joe could turn on me. Joe could. I I, I don't <laughs> believe he will. I mean, he's a. I mean, I just saying practically. Yeah. I don't know what tomorrow will be. I, right. So part of this is not trusting people. It's trusting God. It's trusting God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, I don't, I'm not trying to sound like a cliche answer, but no, just a reality that I've had to embrace myself is I can't live free without trusting God in my confessing of sins to him, but I also can't live free without trusting God in my confession of my sin to someone else. Mm-hmm. And, good, and I, I need that. Mm-hmm. I, I need that. And so please don't hear me dismissing or minimizing that pain or that fear, mm-hmm. that struggle. Um, if you need someone that you really feel like you can trust, you don't have someone, um, call me or Tammy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll, tr- we'll, we'll try and help you find somebody. Mm-hmm. We'll try and walk that with you as well. Mm-hmm. We're meant to do this. We're meant to be together. Tammy is saying that I love, that I'm using more and more in my life is we are better Together. together, better yeah. together. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And the enemy wants that to never happen. Mm-hmm. That is his, one of his greatest ways of, of prowling and looking mm-hmm. for a line. And, and so I, that's why this series is actually going to be more importantly lived out in our grow groups Absolutely. than oh, it's yeah. going to be lived out in our sermons on Sunday mornings. Mm-hmm. As we look at this series, you know, I'm, 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 I, I'm opening up the series. That's mm-hmm. going to be coming in and, and taking a couple of weeks, and I'll be coming in, and that will come in again. And mm-hmm. as we go through this series, it's easy to just want to focus on this one directional, mm-hmm. like me talking, Thad talking, <laughs> way of, of getting, of hearing something, and then just me and God, you know. Mm-hmm. But really, the, the beginning to live free is not going to be what happens on Sunday morning. The beginning to live free is going to be what happens with others. This is why mm-hmm. grow groups are so big here at Bethany. I just, get, I just really need to hit that. And if you're not in a grow group, you're hearing this, I'm just going to say it again. Contact us even mm-hmm. for the next several weeks. We'd love to help get you in one um, where you can maybe taste and see. Even if you're not sure if you're ready to share, you can maybe see others. Mm-hmm. Begin to share to get vulnerable, to get a little real. Mm-hmm. Um, in that, don't be, 
you don't be alone. We got to get, we have to get together. We got to be together. We got to begin to walk this together. One of the things we do in grow groups, and hopefully your grow groups are doing this too, is when we get into prayer time, we've, we've been asking grow groups more and more to, uh, to create moments of even separating into genders. Mm -hmm. So for deeper vulnerability, you know, there's things that, that uh, you know, Joe and I are in a grow group together mm -hmm. and um, a couple other guys, and there's things that we'll share in that that maybe wouldn't be the right thing to share mm -hmm. uh, in the whole large group, you know, with the kids running around and different wives and, and uh, people there. But at the same time, when we get together, that might be the better place mm -hmm. to share. And so we try to create those moments. And so that's another thing I want to encourage you to do is create those moments in grow groups, leaders, mm -hmm. if you're listening. And um, and uh, maybe you've done it sometimes, but this series, I don't think you can err on the side of doing it every week to Ups just slowly see what God does with that. Yeah, of splitting into the two genders. Of splitting into the genders, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a good challenge. It's good. Mm -hmm. I think um, the main thing I'm thinking is uh, it doesn't matter whether the sermon is good or bad. It's whether you live it out. If you take what the sermon says and then move forward into it, uh, into your everyday life. If you don't, these sermons are going to mean nothing to you. And again, I wanted to challenge the guilt that comes with sin. Like mm -hmm. as we get ready to close here, um, we shared Paul's battle. He doesn't do what he wants. He does what he hates. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. At the same time, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, he says, you know, remember no temptation has overtaken you except what is common mm -hmm. to humanity. Mm -hmm. No temptation has come to you, has come to me, has come to Joe, Tammy, except what is common to all of us. Yeah, we might struggle mm -hmm. with being more tempted by something else or the other, mm -hmm. but you are not alone in your temptation. You're not alone in your sin. I'm not alone. And I've, I believe that over the years. I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, none of us are alone. And so to recognize mm -hmm. that no temptation is common, is, is uncommon to all humanity. Mm -hmm. and, and right after that, he says, and God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He will provide a way. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we're able to, but with temptation, he will also provide us an escape. And so if you're struggling with freedom, don't hear that as, well, there's something wrong with you, except to say, I want you to have hope mm -hmm. right now. We believe over the next several weeks, God's going to help us see what those, av what those ways are mm -hmm. that he allows us to begin to fight, to be able to, um, to, to, when we're tempted, but not farther than we can handle, that we can bear, the, to see the escapes that God provides for us. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to begin to talk about over the next several weeks. And so as you're wrestling with this right now, you're not even sure how to act. If you need to start there, mm -hmm. start with hope. That's no good. temptation uh, has overtaken any of us, meaning we've actually sinned to it. Mm -hmm. no, <laughs> no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. Mm -hmm. doesn't say you've just been wrestled with a sin or wrestled with a temptation has overtaken you. It's mm -hmm. common. We're all walking this same path together. And God is faithful. He's provided a way out. Mm -hmm. But we need each other to do that. Mm -hmm. And we need God, the knowledge of God to do that. We hope to bring the knowledge of God and his word over the next several weeks walk that together. Well, we have to, I'm thinking of a drowning person, and if you're thrown in the buoy, mm -hmm. they have to grab the buoy. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that buoy is the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, we will see you guys someday. God bless. Mm -hmm.